Hi guys, I'm Kristen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review for the book The Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. I had heard about this book on a couple different channels, but the book that really convinced me and that tipped the scales into reading this book right away was Angela from the channel Literature Science Alliance. She talked about this on the World Hoppers video about um, anticipated winter releases and convinced me that I would absolutely love this book, which I did. This is not just going to be a gush review though, although I would love to just gush about this book, so if you've read it, let me know down below so we can talk further. But I want my reviews to help you decide if this is a book that you should read. And so I'm going to try to give pros and cons and things that I think will help you decide whether or not you should read this book. Now, M.A. Carrick is the pen name for the author collaboration between Marie Brennan and Alec Helms. This is a first book in a new adult fantasy series called The Rook and Rose. And if you are hesitant to get into another fantasy series, the second book is already scheduled to be released in December of this year. This is a multi POV fantasy, so we do get quite a few different perspectives, but I would definitely say the main character is Ren or Renata or Arenza, depending on what she's up to. Ren is a con artist and is in the process of working a pretty big con. She is trying to get herself wormed into one of the high society or noble families within the city and get access to their accounts. There is a lot of political scheming that is happening amongst these noble families and Renata quickly gets sucked into all of that. There are quite a few different types of magic within this world. Magic is very commonplace, but not everyone has access to it or completely understands some or all of the different magic systems. There is sort of a dream-based magic system. There is a tarot card-esque reading magic system called the pattern. There is also a written or scribed magic system and a form of imbuing objects with magical elements. So for example, one of the characters is a seamstress who can imbue the works that she's working on so that, for example, the dress actually shines. Some of the other things that are going on sort of within the city and within the book is that there is a new drug called Ash on the streets that is affecting a lot of different people. There are also kids who live on the streets who are disappearing and when they return they are unable to fall asleep. And there is a vigilante who I see as sort of a cross between Batman and Robin Hood called the Rook and this, the character of the Rook, essentially protects people in the lower classes of this society. And all of this craziness is what Ren gets sucked into as she is pretending to be Renata and scheming her way into this noble family. She also has another sort of persona that she uses, Arenza, which is her real name, but she pretends to be one of the pattern readers that helps her sort of influence certain things through the pattern. Some of the other points of view that we get to see are the female head of the family that she is trying to con her way into. We also get to see one of the captains in the city watch, essentially, named Grey. We get the perspective of Vargo, who is sort of a slum lord who's trying to gain legitimacy in the business and noble world. We occasionally get to see the point of view of Ren's sister Tessa who is pretending to be her seamstress and I think there are a couple more but some of them are spoilers so I won't say. One thing about this multi POV book is that we are not in several different places or people who are not connected as of yet. All of the people whose points of view we get to see all know each other are in, and are in the exact same setting. I will say that there are a lot of people within this book. There are a lot of different types of magic and this book would really lend itself well to note taking. If you are someone who likes to take notes and keep track of things as they discovered how people are related to each other, there is a glossary and a dramatis personae in the back of the book. Same goes with the magic system and in particular the pattern reading or like the, the card reading tarot reading esque one has a lot of different cards and there are several times when we are shown a reading and 
while it's not exactly necessary to remember what all of the different cards are and what they mean because she does like explain how she's interpreting them i can imagine that some people might like to keep track of like the cards as they as you're introduced to them and as she says like oh this one is that <laughs> that was descriptive and helpful i hope you appreciated that <laughs> The other component that I think is interesting, but that also makes us a little bit confusing is that Ren has a couple different personas and she's interacting with people either as Renata or as Arenza. So there are some sort of confusing connections and scheming going on. I really like that style of confusing, chaotic mess in a book. I kind of like not always knowing what's happening and being 100% certain about how everything fits together but perhaps you don't. And so be aware that there is some level of confusingness to this book. Overall, I really, really loved the web of deception and intrigue within this book, not just the con that Ren is running, but also the scheming within the nobles, the scheming of the slumlord Vargo, and the contrast between the high society, high nobles, and more of these slums the conflicting colonial elements as well, and how all of these characters are meshing together and how that shapes out. This book is definitely con in the extreme and sort of quick talking, getting your way in and out of situations. And this whole mystery of who is the rook. From a sense of pacing, I did mention that the first half of the book is quite slow because it is a lot of world building and development. It spans a large period of time. This is not a quick in and out con. This is a con that develops over a period of several months. And I appreciated that we took the time to really, really get to know everyone involved and get to know the setting and the situation and see this con develop and blossom into where it is at when stuff starts to go down in and around the 50% mark. There is a very specific event that happens around 50% that really ramps up the action and the tension in a different way. And then this tension sort of stays high for the final 50% of the book. I didn't mind the first half slow, second half fast pacing, but that might bother you. It was not quite as significant as if you think about the poppy war where it had the very much so like this is a school setting, this is a war setting, and they almost felt like two separate books. This did feel like one whole story and it did feel like a whole complete story. I don't feel like anything happened too quickly. Nothing felt underdeveloped. Everything very much so made sense in the timing that it happened. The characters in this first book in the series don't have a lot of character growth in this single book. It is much more about the character dynamics and the relationship building between the characters involved. That's really where the change happens and I would say that's where the big character moments happen. It's not necessarily about personal growth at this point in the series, it's about relationship growth and dynamics. Some characters I did like a little bit more than others, but it was not nearly as dramatic as some multi-POV books where I was kind of frustrated to have to have a chapter in that person's head. I was never disappointed to turn the page and find out that we were in that character's head. There were some characters that I liked more than others, obviously. I think that that's just human nature. I also really tend to suffer from primacy bias. So there's one character in particular who I didn't really like, but only because he didn't really like Ren, our main character, and she's sort of the first character that we get introduced to. Although it is sometimes confusing, it is really fun and interesting that Ren has sort of three different personas throughout the book because sometimes she has relationships with the same person but with a different persona. Part of me struggles to believe this. If you really know someone that well or are spending as much time as they are as she is in one persona, how could they not recognize her in another persona? So there are some moments where I don't always buy that people can't see that that's the same person, but I love this book enough that I will give it the benefit of the doubt. 
but it is interesting how she has such extremely different interactions with people depending on who she's pretending to be. And then finally to talk a little bit about magic and world building, I would say that this is a slightly complicated setting and world. It is a very narrow world in that we are largely focused in the city of Nadezhra, but this city feels like a very real, fully developed place. I do think that the colonial element is done quite well, where the ruling class is this colonizing people and there is definitely prejudice and racism involved here. But the way that we are seeing the world from so many different perspectives really gets to show us, the reader, how things are in this city and how things are so different depending on who you are and where you live. Outside of the city and the politics and the magic, there is also astrology, there are gods, there is history, there are various noble houses. So there is a lot going on in this book. And as I said, it would lend itself well to some note taking if that's the type of reader that you are. But there is still that glossary and dramatis persona at the back of the book. The magic systems are interesting because not only are there so many of them, but all of the different characters have different experiences with these magic. So some of them are able to imbue, some of them are um, I think it's called inscriptors, so the ones who are able to do the written magic, and some of them are patterners who can do the tarot card reading-esque magic. But then some of the other characters don't fully understand any of those various magic systems, and while we are introduced to these various magics in different, like, depths, it does seem like they all have rules. We, the reader, just don't know all of them. And some of that is because the viewpoint that we have doesn't know all of the rules or it's just not fully explained to us yet. So we don't understand and some of the characters don't understand all that is capable with any of the different forms of magic in this world. One final thing about world building that I thought was so awesome and so well done was the gender identity and sexual orientation component of this book. There are straight and gay characters, there are bi characters, there are trans characters, everything is possible and it's all okay within this world. And there are ways in which this world operates, or at least the politics operate, that have accounted for that fact. For example, inheritance within these noble families, it isn't necessarily about the oldest son or the oldest child period implying that one would have to have a birth child in order for them to have an heir and that's how the family hierarchy is passed down. Noble families are built around this idea of a register so everyone that is like officially part of that family is written into the register. They can adopt people in. It's not about blood. It is who's written into this register and the heir is simply selected from within the register. It's also talked about by everyone in a very completely normal, commonplace manner. For example, when we're first introduced to a trans character, they are described as sort of, this person was born a daughter and is now a son to their parents. Period, moved on. Also in terms of orientation, there is a scene where one noble family is offering another noble family a like a political marriage or alliance and they sort of in this letter are like, well, we think based on on so-and-so's recent habits that they would prefer a, a girl, um, in which case we have many, but a boy could be arranged as well. There are lots of young children within this family who could be selected as that person's heir. And it's just like very straightforward and accepted. This book does have a complete arc, so it does have a satisfying ending. There is no cliffhanger, although I am very excited to see where the next book goes. And there are definitely some things that are not completely wrapped up and that will be addressed or expanded on in the next book. The sensation that I had when I finished this book was not, oh my god, I must read the next book immediately. It was, oh my god, I need to read this book again right now. And that is because of some of the mystery components, especially the mystery of who the Rook is and how that is handled throughout the book it had an extremely satisfying ending that I don't want to say whether or not I knew that it was coming or was totally shocked because I don't want to give anything away because I think that that really plays into how this book is written and how the mystery is addressed. And I think that it'll be such an interesting book to reread because of the way the mystery is handled. I will say that there are a lot of breadcrumbs, some of them real and some of them purposefully misleading. 
and oh man, I ate all of those breadcrumbs up. So if you have read this book and you want to talk to me about <laughs> specific things, write spoilers down below in the comment and like hit enter a bunch of times and we can chat spoilery stuff. You can also connect with me on social media. I will link my Goodreads channel at the end and I'm also on Instagram. I will link my Instagram as well. So feel free to reach out if you want to talk The Mask of Mirrors. I am totally up for it. Now, how to know if you should read this book or if it's going to be the right book for you. So this book might be for you if you really like high society fantasy scheming. A lot of it is high society, fancy dress, balls, party, scheming, wearing pretty white gloves and all of that. This book also might be for you if you really, really like character relationships and connections. There is a little bit of a romantic relationship here, but it is definitely not the priority. And I would say as someone who loves romantic relationships in books, I was okay with how little there was in this book because it was so much more about the dynamics and connections between people. This book might be for you if you really like vigil anti books. I didn't get super into that element of the book, but there is such a great vigil anti in the form of this Rook character and his interactions with other people in the book are amazing and a really fun mystery component to this book. And I think the series is going since the series is called the Rook and Rose. I think the Rook is going to become even more important in future books. This book might not be for you if you don't really like slow plots. As I said, the first 50% of the book is really slow. And while the book is extremely fast in the final 30, 50%, I don't think if you don't like slow paced books, I don't think you'll make it to the 50% mark. <laughs> this book also might not be for you if you don't like convoluted layers of deception and how people all relate to each other. Like if you don't like huge casts of characters with complicated connections to each other on top of a web of lives, it's probably not for you. And finally, this book might not be for you if you really need to be able to understand what is going on with the magic system. As I said, it does seem like there are rules. We just really don't know them. And we, the reader, are just sort of swept along with it. So if you really need to understand the magic or like straightforward, simple, or maybe even just one magic system, again, this might not be the right book for you. Anyway, that is it on my review for The Mask of Mirrors. I absolutely loved this book. Honestly, perhaps my favorite book of the year so far. Definitely the one that I have been the most excited about post reading it. We're talking like running into the other room to tell my partner how amazing what I just read was and how I wanted to pick it up and read it again. I cannot gush about this book more, but I do understand it's not for everyone. If you have read this book, let me know down below. I'd love to chat further. If you have questions about the book that you think might help you decide if you should read this book and that I haven't addressed, definitely let me know down below. I will try to avoid spoilers with those comments as well. Anyway, that is it for me today. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.